Celtic Myths and Legends by T.W. Rolleston Chapter 1 in Celts in Ancient History The Cursing of Tara A singular and very cogent illustration of this truth can be drawn from the history of the early Celtic world in the 6th century of the Common Era, a little over a hundred years after the preaching of Christianity by St. Patrick, a king named Dermot MacCarval ruled in Ireland. He was the Ard Rai, or High King of that country, whose seat of government was at Tara in Meath and whose office, with its nominal and legal superiority to the five provincial kings, represented the impulse which was moving the Irish people towards a true national unity. The first condition of such a unity was evidently the establishment of an effective central authority. Such an authority, as we have said, the high king, in theory, represented now, it happened that one of his officers was murdered in the discharge of his duty by Chief Hugh Uary. Celtic Diar Muid Mac Kier Bale, is that how you pronounce it? Guary was the brother of a bishop, you know, instead of Thermot. Dermud instead of Dermot. Okay. It was the brother of a bishop related by Fosterich to Sir Radan of Lorha. And when King Dermot sent to arrest the murderer, these clergy found him a hiding place. And remember that. Um, Fosterage means breastfed by the same woman. Dermot, however caused a searching to be made, hailed him forth from under the roof of Sir Ruradan and brought him to Tara for trial. Immediately, the ecclesiastics of Ireland made common cause against the lay ruler who had dared to execute justice on a criminal under clerical protection, they assembled at Tara, fasted against the king, and laid their solemn maldiction upon him, and the seat of his government. Then the chronicler tells us that Dermot's wife had a prophetic dream. Upon Tara's green was a vast and wide foliaged tree, and eleven slaves hewing at it, but every chip that they knocked from it, but it returned into its place again, and there adhere instantly, till at last there came one man that dealt the tree but a stroke, and with that single cut laid it low. The fair tree was the Irish monarchy. The twelve hewers were the twelve saints or apostles of Ireland, and the one who laid it low was Sir uh, was St. Rodan, the plea of the king for his country, whose fate he saw to it, that hanging in the balance, is recorded with moving force and insight by the Irish chronicler. The authority here quoted is a narrative contained in the 15th century Vellum manuscript found in Beesmore Castle in 1814 and translated by S. H. O'Grady in his Silva Gedelica. The narrative is attributed to an officer of Dermot's court. Alas, he said, for the iniquitous contest that ye have waged against me, seeing that it is Ireland's good that I pursue, and it preserve her discipline and royal right, but tis Ireland's unpeace and murderousness that ye endeavor 
after, okay. Um, and the tree cut low, Silva, Gadelica, S.H. O'Grady, page 73. But Ruadan said, Desolate be Tara forever and ever. And the popular awe of the ecclesiastical malediction prevailed. The criminal was surrendered. Tara was abandoned. And except for a brief space, when a strong usurper, Brian Boru, fought his way to power, Ireland knew no effective secular government till it was imposed upon her by a conqueror. The last words of the historical tract from which we quote are Dermot's cry of despair. The fasting against the king was a, pra was a practice known in India also for the person who was wronged by a superior or thought himself so to sit before the doorstep of the denier of justice and fast until right was done him. In Ireland, a magical power is attributed to the ceremony, the effect of which would be averted by the other person fasting as well. Woe to him that with the clergy of the churches battle joins. This remarkable incident has been described at some length because it is typical of a factor whose provident influences and in molding the history of the Celtic peoples we can trace through a succession of critical events from the time of Julius Caesar to the present day. How and whence it arose, we shall consider later. Here it is enough to call attention to it. It is a factor which forbade the national development of the Celts in the sense in which we can speak of that, of the classical or the Teutonic peoples. Now, since the cursing of Tara is the name of this section, Let's remember the threefold law, the guilt, the shame, the worry. Or we can see it as ill feelings about it not being the right thing. The impatience with it not being acted out, and perhaps it being returned back to one. So, obviously be careful with one's curses. Um, and the basic of this, I'm sure, goes back before Muhammad ibn Abdullah, but that's a place where you do find the idea of a threefold law coming, you know, the... The, the regret, the, the worry, the it perhaps returning on you because it was not deserved. So be very careful of these things. And again, don't just judge a curse as, oh, it's bad because it's a curse. It doesn't work that way either.